Giraffe Who Got Into An Oat by John Bush. The sun was ablaze in the African sky when Codwell Giraffe just happened to spy a quite irresistible camel thorn tree, the sight of which made Cardwell weak at the knee. Oh, bless my spots, just to think I was born to feast upon such a fine camel thorn. Without further bother or thus or ado, Cardwell opened his mouth and started to chew. Out curled his tongue, and in went the leaves, oh, that fine camel thorn, most the delicious of trees. In a rapture of eating, his eyes slowly closed. In a rapture of eating, he followed his nose. Sniffy sniff, chomping here, chomping there, with the scent of fresh camel thorn filling the air. He chewed and he chewed and he carried on chewing. Pity he couldn't see what he was doing, for he bent and contorted himself such a lot that he tied his neck up in a big knotty knot. What have I done? he cried. What shall I do? I wish that I'd kept my eyes open to chew. How funny I friends will all laugh. Oh, who will undo such a naughty giraffe? By now all the beasts of the African jungle had gathered around to observe Cardwell's bungle. Cardwell's a shorty, a shorty we teased. From now on you'll have to find much shorter trees, cried Cardwell. Please help me untie myself, please, said Zebra. You might come undone if you sneeze. So they tickled his nose till he sneezed with such power that ostrich's feathers blew off in a shiver. But the sneeze did not work. Its only effect was to tighten not loosen the knot in his neck. Then tugging and pulling, the elephants tried with all of their strength to get Cardwell untied. Stop it, yelled Cardwell. Stop it, please do. If you keep on much longer, my spots will turn blue. At this stage, a bundu bird hopped on his head. Now, Cardwell, just do as I ask you, he said. Wherever I fly, let your head follow me. Don't worry, I'm sure it will work. Wait and see. He twisted and circled around Cardwell's head and Cardwell's eyes followed wherever he led. When he stopped, the dismay on the animal's face told Cardwell the truth he had knots in three places. At last, Lionel Lion, who was usually right, Growled, I know what he needs, a jolly good fright. So he sat before Cardwell, then opened his jaws and let out the most ferocious of roars. Cardwell's hair stood on end. He shuddered and shivered from the shock of the roar that Lionel delivered. His teeth rattled loose, his eardrums were shattered, but his neck was quite straight and that's all that mattered. The animals burst into joyful applause what a tumult had went from their hooves and their paws. Now Cardwell said, Lionel, next time you're chewing, do keep your eyes open and watch what you're doing. Yes, sir, said Cardwell. I'm sure I'm spotted. That's the very last time I will get myself knotted.